Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. So, would you agree with me that 4 is the same as 2 times 2, 9 is the same as 3 times 3, 16 is the same as, now try this at home quickly. Well, that's 4 times 4. 25 is the same as 5 times 5, x squared is the same as x times x, y squared is the same as y times y. You will see why I'm doing this soon. I'm not crazy. 36 is the same as 6 times 6. 81, 9 times 9. 100 is the same as 10 times 10. 49 is the same as 7 times 7. w squared is w times by w. a squared is a times a. All of these things that I'm showing you on the screen, these are called squares, okay? So 9 is a square number because 3 times 3 is 9. 4 is a square number because of 2 times 2. Why do we even call it squares? Here's a little side note. Imagine you have a square and this length over here is 2 and this length is 4. I mean 2. What would the area of the shape be? Well, you would say 2 times 2 and then you get 4. If we had another square over here where this is 5 and this is 5, the area would be 5 times 5, which is 25. And that's why we call it a square number. That's just a side note. So you need to become very familiar with these square numbers. For example, the number 17 is not a square number because there is no number that you can multiply with itself and get 17. Okay, so take a mental picture, square numbers, you must know them and you must also be able to recognize letters that are square for example y squared is the same as y times y so a new type of factorizing is the following they'll typically look like this if you have so we need the following we need two terms yep we got two terms over here one two they must be separated with a minus. Have we got a minus? Yes. And then lastly, we must have square numbers. Okay, so let's have a look. x squared, that's a square number because I know that x times x gives me x squared. 4 is a square number because 2 times 2 is 4. If I asked you x squared minus 5, that wouldn't work because we don't have a, 5 is not a square number. So if you can fulfill these three categories over here, then when you factorize this, it will become two brackets. And then you put this first square number like that, the second square number like that, and then you just separate it with a plus and a minus. You can have it as a minus and a plus. It doesn't matter as long as you have both of them. And that's it. So this is a new kind of factorizing, and it's called the difference, which stands for minus of squares and I just showed you what square numbers are. So let's practice this. So here we go. Do we have two terms? Yes we do. Are they separated with a minus? Yes they are. Is each one a square number? Well yes, 3 times 3 is 9 and x times x is x squared. So we can go ahead and open our brackets. 9 was first so you'll put a 3 and a 3. Then it's x squared so we put x and x and then a plus and a minus. Here's another one. Do we have two terms? Yes, we do. Do we have a minus? Yes, and then each one is a square number, so we can say 4 minus y, and then 4 plus y. If you were asked to factorize this one, this is not a square. Well, you can't do, you can't do difference of squares here, because x3 is not a square number, and 16x is not a square number either. However, when factorizing, you should always use common factor first, if you can. So you try to take out a common factor and the common factor here is x. So you take out the x and then you're left with x squared minus 16. Now, if you look inside this bracket, that's going to be, those are two terms inside that bracket. They are separated with a minus and each one is a perfect square because x times x gives you x squared and 4 times 4 gives you 16. So what we do is we leave this x where it is. We open up our two brackets and we get x x, 4, and 4, and then one of them gets a minus and one of them gets a plus. So guys, please remember, always try do common factor first. If I give you something like this, then of course there is no common factor, but then both of these are square numbers already, so we can go straight into our double brackets. 
where it will be x times x, 5 times 5, and then one of them is a plus, one of them is a minus. But in this one, we had to first take out a common factor, and then the bracket that was left over became a difference of squares. Okay, so why don't you pause the video and quickly try this one. Now I'm hoping I caught some of you who are watching this. What we have is two terms. Great. Are they separated with a minus? No. So can we do difference of squares? Nope. So if you're sitting at home and you did x plus 5, x minus 5, I caught you. I'm going to quickly show you how this actually works. Like how can we just say that this is... So here we've got two terms separated with a minus. So it just becomes x, x, and then 2 and 2, and then a plus and a minus. But how does this actually work? So if I gave you this question here and I said please would you simplify, you would then go and do products. So you would multiply everything out, so that would give you x squared. You would then do this one, which would give you minus 2x. Then you would do this, which would give you plus 2x. And then you would do that, which would give you minus 4. So have a look here, guys. Because we have a plus 2 and a minus 2, look what ends up happening in the middle. The minus 2 and the plus 2x cancel and so what do we get left with? x squared minus 4. So it does work. But if I gave you x squared plus 4 and you forgot about, you saw, you forgot that it has to have a minus, you would probably go x minus 2, x plus 2. But if you had to go multiply this out, you would get x squared plus 2x minus 2x minus 4. So these would cancel, but look what you're ending up with, minus 4 whereas we have plus 4. So can you see it didn't work? Then you might be saying, ah, oh, Kevin, come on. Then all we have to do is just use two pluses. It's obvious. Okay, well then you're going to get x squared, and then you're going to get plus 2x, and another plus 2x, and a plus 4. Aha, Kevin, I told you we've got the plus 4. Yes, guys, but we also have these two things in the middle that are not going to cancel. And so you're not going to get back to that. So would you agree with me that it doesn't work when this is a plus? It only works, like down here, when there is a minus. That is why one of the qualifying criteria is that we have a minus. And that's also why it's called difference of squares. It's not called sum of squares, it's difference of squares. Okay guys, if you want to pause the video, you can try these. So with number one, people often get a bit panicky when there's a, a fraction, but please do not stress, because a quarter is the same as, so one is the same as one times one, and four is the same as two times two. So if you just say a half times a half, well then that's a quarter. Okay, so this is a square number, and this is a square number, and there's a minus between them, and there's two terms. So we can open up two brackets, we go x, x, half, half, one of them's a plus, one of them's a minus. The reason we do one of them as a plus and one of them as a minus is so that when you have to, if you had to multiply these together, those two middle parts would cancel out. Let me just show you that quickly. Because x times x is x squared, then you would get minus a half x, but then you get plus a half x over here, and then you get minus a quarter. But what's nice is that this middle part cancels because it's minus a half plus a half and so it cancels out and so you get to the original question. That is why we use a plus and a minus. We want it to cancel out. Okay, so there's the answer. Now with the next one, you can't really do anything at the moment because that's not a square number. But remember, you should always try and factorize first. So what can go into this and this? Well, there's an x. Then you would be left with x squared minus 25. Now that is two terms over here and over here. Each one is a square number and there's a minus in between. So what we do is we leave this x on the outside. Then we open up two brackets. We say x and x, 5 and 5, minus and a plus. Or a plus and a minus, it's up to you. And so that's the answer for that one this entire piece of here. The next one, it's a x squared and 100, so we know that x times x is x. I mean, x times x is x squared, and 10 times 10 is 100. So we simply open up two brackets, and we say x and x, 10 and 10, a plus and a minus. 
And then for the next one, we know that 3 times 3 is 9, a times a is a squared, so 3 minus a and 3 plus a. For the next one, eh, wonder if I caught you, it's got a plus, so you can't do anything. So the answer stays x squared plus 9. Remember, there has to be a minus in between. And here's the last three. So we know that x times x is x squared. And then 1 times 1 gives you 1. And 3 times 3 gives you 3. So it's just going to be two brackets. x, x, 1 over 3, 1 over 3. One of them gets a plus, one of them gets a minus. This one's easy. w times w gives you w squared. Four time, I mean, 2 times 2 gives you 4. So we open up two brackets w and w, 2 and 2, one of them gets a plus, one of them gets a minus. People often panic when they see the number 1, but they forget that 1 times 1 is 1. So this one just becomes two brackets, w times w, 1 times 1, and then one of them gets a plus, one of them gets a minus. Thank you for watching.